Hey kids, do you like fashionable, high-quality apparel at an affordable price? Well, too bad, because that's not what we're talking about today. I'm going to learn you all a thing or two about the real banana republics. Our story begins during the turn of the 20th century in Central and South America. Agriculture's kind of a big deal right now. You've got a ton of little plantations all over the place growing bananas, sugar, pineapples, that kind of thing. And they're doing all right for themselves, no big deal. But then, refrigeration happened, and it changed everything. Because now produce could be kept fresh for way longer in transit, meaning the fruit companies could suddenly open up their business to the international market, their biggest new trade partner being the United States. This massive opportunity gave rise to three main companies known as the United Fruit Company, Coyamel Fruit Company, and the Vaccaro Bros. By growing, shipping, and selling fruit, these three firms made just obscene amounts of money, a lot of which went towards buying out smaller family-owned farms and plantations. This allowed them to make even obscener amounts of money, until eventually the only competition that remained was each other. And then shit got real. The year is 1910. One of the companies I mentioned, Coyamel, was doing most of its business in the country of Honduras, when the president of Honduras, Miguel Davila, decided to give a land grant to the Vaccaro Bros in exchange for helping to build some roadways. In doing so, they basically stole a bunch of Coyamel's potential plantations and gave them to a competitor. So Samuel Zamuri, owner of Coyamel, said to himself, Dang, I hate those guys. If only there was some way for a guy like me to significantly influence the world around him for his own personal gain. Wait a minute. So he used a portion of his McDuck-esque fortune to hire a mercenary army, which he gave to one of his friends, former Honduran President Manuel Bonilla. And together, they overthrew the entire fucking government of Honduras. Yeah. Should have called a Cuyamel. <laughs> anyway, Bonilla took power and gave very generous concessions to Cuyamel and United as thanks. But then America saw this, and they were like, hey, that's not very freedom of you, young man. To which Zemery replied, it's okay, we're gonna help this country succeed. After all, politics and business are essentially the same thing. Well, I suppose it's not our place to be policing the governments of other nations, yet. Still, though, maybe- Oh, also, also? Nanners. Alright, I'm sold, do what you want. So with their interests secured, the businesses continued to thrive and expand. But since they got cut so many breaks by the government, very little of their commerce actually ended up benefiting Honduras as a whole. In fact, the national debt of Honduras got so bad that the government ended up not being able to perform a lot of its functions. So in response, the three fruit companies stepped in and said, no worries, we got this, and decided to basically build the nation's infrastructure for them, including roads, railways, shipping lines, telegraphs, telephone lines, radio towers, they even switched the whole country off to the US dollar. Keep in mind, this wasn't out of the goodness of their hearts. It was mostly just to make their own businesses function more efficiently, but it was helpful either way. Anyway, now, not only did they have total power over their plantations, but also a monopoly over nearly every major industry in the country. Many other Central American nations soon followed this pattern, creating a corrupt sort of symbiosis whereby the fruit companies get huge tax breaks and land grants in exchange for a modernized infrastructure and payoffs to the rich minority. And so, the Banana Republics were were born. Sounds like a pretty sweet gig, right? And it was. For the upper 5% of the populations who happen to hold some direct share in the plantations or shipping lines. For your average Jose, though, life mostly consisted of working on land that wasn't even theirs in exchange for dirt poor wages. <laughs> So that's how things were for like a decade and a half. At some point, Coyamel was bought out by United, but then Zamore became the owner of the whole thing, somehow, and the Vaccaro Company was renamed as Standard Fruit. Then one day, in 1944, the country of Guatemala had a democratic revolution, and the newly elected leader, Juan José Arevalo, wasn't happy with how the companies treated his people. So he implemented several reforms, like a minimum wage law and universal suffrage. And while the populace got a lot of benefit out of this, United Fruit most certainly did not because more rights for their workers means less profits for the business as a whole. Then Guatemala got a new president, Jacobo Arbenz, and he continued these reforms. And United continued to get the metaphorical shaft until finally, in 1953, they decided to go to the USA for help. Oh, Eisenhower. Yo, what's up? This Jacobo guy, he's he's making us pay minimum wages. Well, that doesn't sound very good for business. That's not all, though. He's also taking our unused land and giving it back to the people. Does that sound familiar? Oh, dear. You don't think. By the way it's looking, Dwight, I'd say he's a dirty... Oh, God. Collectivizing? No. Kami. Kami! Kami! Yeah, go get him, Dwight. Whee!
Holy shit, you actually did it. World Star! And from that point onward, Guatemala was ruled by a series of US-backed dictatorships all the way up until 1996. This kind of situation happened in several other places and times as well, almost always driven by some combination of red fear and yellow love. I won't give any more details for the sake of time, but that doesn't mean they weren't big deals. So you might be wondering, where did these companies go? Surely the clan of banana shenanigans can't still be around today. Well, that's where you're wrong. They're still in operation, just under different names. Standard Fruit changed their name in 1991 to become none other than Dole Food Company. You know, when I was a kid, I used to play a lot of Super Monkey Ball, and I used to wonder what kind of cruel tyrant would just stick an ape in a ball for their own amusement. Well, now I know. Those bastards. As for United, one day in 1976, their CEO decided he couldn't take the heat anymore, so he jumped out the fucking window. That's a real thing, look it up. Then some other guy bought the company and renamed it to, drumroll please, Chiquita Banana. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the face you once knew as an innocent, fun-loving dancer-slash-fruit merchant is actually a ruthless tyrant who overthrows democracies and undermines basic human rights for her own profit. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Anella, and thank you for watching.